What's going on everyone? Juicebags here and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. So one of the changes in the last update was the Thick Vines shard got a little bit of a nerf. Uh, it got reduced by 20% um, the damage output of it. So here we are in Chaos 10 Malachi Sewers and I kind of wanted to do an apples to apples comparison. Um, as I do have that video on the channel uh, from that Sunday chill build doing sewers that went just incredibly smooth and was four player friendly. So I want to kind of do that build again, uh, just so I can compare the two. So what we did is we used the drain R for full damage. So we are going on a totem to scale up the uh, power. However, we're using anti melee, anti chaos and defense range with Vicious Strikes, Defense Critical Strike, and then Thick Vines. Uh, let's see what we can do. Actually, I think I had Melee Boom on it before. Um, so I guess it won't be a true apples to apples. Uh, Melee Boom, of course, uh, was kind of there for the memes more than anything else. Uh, but I swapped Melee Boom out for what? For that Defense Range Servo. Yeah, I had Anti-Chaos, Anti-Melee, and... Uh, melee boom before uh let's see i think we went two doggos here something like that and then we gave it uh a double whammy i want to get all the dogs down first because i can't remember exactly uh exactly how much du is left here uh we can just go one one doggo right there and then we spawn camped the very top. So up here, we did something like this. This, I think, is the area I'm most concerned with. And that wouldn't actually be a change to the trees, but a change to the dogs. Um, their attack rate being slower and their health scaler being a little bit lower. I'm not certain they're going to survive. Uh, a spawn camp like this, but we will have to see here. All right. So then over on this lane, we had trees. I want to say they were. They had like three trees, I want to say. Something like that. Uh, we'll give it the um, range pylon. Uh, basically, we want to we give it all the crit damage we can, but I also want to get some range on there. And uh, we'll give it a boost R2 for some crit damage. And then I think we're going to have enough for this. Over here, do um, kind of a similar thing. I did. Did I put automation on there? I don't have automation on it since I'm not using it as the actual wall. So I do have to be careful about that. Let's just move those back just a tickle. Uh, something like that. We'll get our uh, buff beam in and then our health pylons. All right. Now, over here, we did everything underneath here. Let me start right there. So, yeah, we did that. That gives us a little bit of coverage. Once we get the range pylon in and we get some upgrades on... Um, that will give us a little bit more coverage over into the main lane here. But we are going to put more trees down for that area, too. Let's see. Something like that. Let's give it a little bit more crit damage. And you see with the range pile on it overlaps into the spawn. So these are going to hit up top and, uh, and down below there. But we do need something else here. And um, here, I believe I did this with them. Something like that. Yeah, that still leaves me all of the the buff DU left. I didn't go back and watch the video. I should have went back and watched the video first. I just remember it was a full AFK um, Sunday chill build is uh, all I really remember from it. And then we put a reflect beam here, I believe, to help out uh, with any issues there. So, basically, the thought here was 
in the previous build, this was fully AFK in a four-player group. All four, four players could just chill up here. And shy of a siege roller coming or a dragon lord coming, um, you didn't have to do anything at all. And it would just run. So let's try to give it the same comparison. Uh, I'm going to have to keep an eye out on the mini-map and make sure that uh, nothing blows up. It looks like those werewolves up top are holding their own for the moment. And i got to watch those flyers, too. I think the flyers will probably be all right. Now, once we get some upgrades in on the trees, that, of course, is upgrading their health as well, which is increasing their damage. So far, so good. This one actually runs pretty quick, too. Obviously, that was not the speediest building job, but you can build this build super, super fast, and it runs pretty quickly really I'm gonna do some upgrades though I did do upgrades on it before so I am gonna do upgrades again and basically I want to hit the trees and not overly concerned about much else I'm actually kind of curious how long can't imagine it would go very long, but I wonder how long this would hold in survival. It's a little aggressive on the spawn camp for a survival build. And then there's 30 DU left over. I could throw in like, um, you know, a flame aura or something here, or just something to help out with the flyers from that lane, because the flyers would end up being an issue. Uh, that's for sure. The werewolves are doing pretty decent against those chieftain too when they come out. One of the changes with the werewolves uh, actually buffed their damage, so I kind of want to play around with a werewolf uh, DPS build as well and see. But prior, it was kind of lackluster, uh, and it was just best used as a tanky wall, and it's I think that's still probably the case. But if we can get a little bit more out of it and not have to sacrifice too much survivability, that would not be a bad thing either. The Cannon Ogre, is he going to walk? As long as he stays in front of the Reflect Beam, the Cannon Ogre should be good. And it looks like he's going to stay in front of the Reflect, so should be alright. Let's go ahead and yoink up all the mana here. While well, that guy's uh, getting burned, definitely not the speediest boss killer. The waves themselves run pretty quick, but the bosses can be a little bit, uh, a little bit on the sketch side. It just takes a long, long time to burn them down since it's just kind of, it's kind of tickle damage, but it's blanket coverage tickle damage. Let's see. Let's go ahead and get. We'll get those three. I kind of want to get these three as well right here and then we got enough for well we'll hit two of these and then we'll hit two of these i mean so far so good for sure it's definitely beasting it out now a lot of people use the trees directly as a wall of course and nothing wrong with that either just with this being such a full damage-focused build, uh, that's why I decided to use the werewolf walls in there originally. Well, I mean, this build was intended as an AFK build. But we see uh, right now with the upgrades, uh, it's 1.89. Looks like almost 1.9 million on the crits. And then I think those 1 million... Or no, the 1 million shots would be those ranged enemies. So it's 1.9 where all of the, um, where anti-melee and anti-chaos are stacking. 1.3 where it's just anti-melee. And then the 1.9 when it's got the full, uh, the full selection. What are we holding over here? You see Dreadbone's gone. I mean, it's not crazy damage, but it's very consistent damage. Uh, can't be affected by Frost Orcs, of course, since um, the trees have no actual attack rate. 
So that's another benefit of it as well. Give those another one. Let's just hit these stragglers. I'm not going to full up everything. Just going to go ahead and let it fly from here since uh, it seems to be doing quite well. We do have um, what one werewolf was going yellow there. Let's go ahead and upgrade that guy too. He seems like he's taking most of the damage. There we go. Still fairly smooth, uh, that is for sure. Like I said, I kind of want to test this out in survival and see <laughs> see how far it would go. I can't imagine it would go very far. But maybe get to wave 90 or 100 or something, perhaps? Uh, not even sure there. Of course, then we would have full upgrades on everything, including like the buff beam which would get our crit damage way, way up. Uh, we get our buff beam and boost star upgraded all the way. And the crit damage will be through the roof then. Well, in fact, I should have added more crit damage. I could have put a crit damage shard uh, on my buff beam. As the buff beams, the trees are not getting any benefit from like boosted power or whatever. So I didn't fully crit out my buff beam, which is uh, should be happening for sure. All right. Well, I mean, it is just wrecking. Let's uh, let's go ahead and let the last wave fly here. I am gonna test that tonight if I get a little extra time. I I just am very very curious to see what this would do on survival. I'd probably have to do like a a wave sixty one start maybe to be able to you know get the trees and everything upgraded, or I could just DPS you know through the start of it. But very, very curious to see how this one would hold. I think that's a good project for uh, watching the rest of Fallout here uh, tonight, maybe. That werewolf's doing fine. So anyone who has tested the werewolves in a DPS sense... Uh, after the update, uh, let me know down in the comments below what you thought about it. I know people were using it for DPS prior to the update, but it was kind of lackluster then, in my opinion. Uh, let me know what you guys think now, if you have tested it out after after the update. So, 50% uh, uh, damage is fairly large. Let's see, we got a Cyclone Shaper, we'll just help close the deal there. And then what, we had a Cannon Ogre stuck in the spawn, or shooting at the core? No, it looks like it was stuck in the spawn. But yeah, still pretty smooth sailing there. No major issues. Um, like I said, the, the spawn camps like this are just not going to last too long in survival. As the enemy's damage scaling just goes up so high, these walls would just end up getting annihilated really fast. But I am kind of curious. You know, if you could go, you know, 61 or 71 to 100, this might make for a super, super smooth uh, survival chill build. But like I said, I'm not sure if that's a reality at all. So it just might not uh, hold anywhere near that long. But I will test that out here uh, either tonight or in the upcoming days. But yeah, still looking pretty good. So the damage nerf to Thick Vines did not seem too overwhelming here. Uh, as far as this build, it's uh, pretty much apples to apples, exact same thing as before. Um, and before we had that melee boom, of course, so. Uh, the only change there would be we've got slightly, we're at the, the max range a little bit easier now. But uh, anyway, that will do it for now. Thanks an absolute ton, y'all. Hopefully everyone's having a wonderful week, and uh, I will see y'all soon. Take it easy.